So today's block of the day is going to be a left-sided popliteal teal sciatic catheter with ultrasound uh, for a revision uh, arthrodesis of the left ankle. Real cold and wet here. I'm going to make a nice wide chlorhexidine prep because we're going to scan from the popliteal teal crease all the way to about a hand breadth or two above the knee. Notice I don't leave, I don't take any of the sticky stuff off. I think leaving that uh, sticky stuff off allows you to, to slide your drape, sterile drape, proximal and distal on the leg. Okay, we'll start at the pebble tail crease and scan our way up the leg. In the middle of the screen there, the pebble tail sciatic artery, if I compress, there's kind of two veins it looks like, two branches of the pebble tail vein. You can compress those, but the artery remains pulsatile. We can put color flow on. We can confirm that you see, in fact, a pulsatile pebble tail artery. Okay, we can go back to 2D. You never want to leave the color flow on while you're live scanning because it degrades the image a little bit. And superficial to that artery, which is up on the screen, and a little to the right, which is technically medial, it's going to be the tibial nerve. And all we're going to do is find that tibial nerve there. It's kind of a honeycomb looking structure. And we're going to slide really fast up the leg until it joins with the perineal. Right there in the center of the screen is the entire sciatic nerve together, tibial and perineal. Scan down the leg, you can see the two separate. Back up the leg, see them come together, separate, and come together. We're going to block it up right at the juncture where they come together, and that's where we're going to do our catheter. This nerve is about two and a half centimeters deep at this location. So we'll go, we'll draw an imaginary line from here out and go two and a half centimeters deep to that for our insertion of our needle. Big bee sting. Just using a Perifix epidural catheter kit, off label as a regional anesthesia kit. You can see the TUI needle coming in from the left side of the screen is an 18 gauge TUI. So what we're going to do is find, allow the TUI to come underneath the nerve at about 6 o'clock position. And we'll start peeling away, hydrodissecting beneath the nerve. Our first 5 or 10 cc's of local. Give 3 cc's of local there, Todd, please. You can see immediately, even without intentionally doing it, you can see immediately the local anesthesia has split perineal above and to the left of the needle tip and tibial, which is just past the needle tip. So I'm going to steepen the angle to get underneath and past tibial nerve. Okay, give me three cc's there. Okay, render and past. I'm going to get five cc's slowly. I'm going to pull my needle back slowly to get the infiltration underneath the tibial nerve. I'm going to give another 5 cc's as I pull back and then go over the top of, of perineal nerve. 5 cc's there. Okay, another 3 cc's as I finish the job going over the top of perineal. 3 more cc's. Okay, you can now see I'm totally encircled perineal nerve with local anesthesia like a donut all around the perineal nerve. Slide back up to see the needle in plane. And I'll come back over the top of tibial past perineal. One cc there. Another one cc there. Okay, now I've completed the circle around tibial nerve which now has a circle of local anesthesia around it. So now what I'm going to do is kind of the over the river and through the woods technique here. I'm going to allow my needle tip to go over the top of perineal nerve and then under tibial nerve. So I'll pull back a little bit, push up on the hub of my needle and hydrodissect back underneath tibial. 
so that I'm truly going over the top of one and under the other. So all that local anesthesia that backflows along that catheter should infiltrate both nerves well now. Give two cc's there and I'll follow my injection there. Go one deeper on the screen there. Okay, you can see the two nerves separated there. You can see that I'm over the top of perineal and under tibial. Give one more there. And then with the last one, I'll be about, relative to the tibial nerve, I'll be about five o'clock. One more cc. Uh, initially, that's where I'll leave my needle tip and thread my catheter, just past the needle tip. And the bevel is up. And I'm allowing the natural curvature of the catheter to, to force the tip of the catheter superficially as it comes out the needle tip. You see our needle tip is just over the top of perineal and just under tibial. Relative to the tibial, if the tibial is a clock face, the catheter tip is going to come out around 5 o'clock relative to tibial. You can see the catheter emerge through the needle there. I'm just going to leave it right where it lies there. And thread a little bit of extra slack of the catheter. In that compartment right underneath, right over the top of both. And if I back out the needle, about halfway to three quarters of the way out, as usual, I'm just putting a couple of extra centimeters of catheter slack subcutaneously. And the catheter is about 16 cc, 16 centimeters of the skin. Make sure that catheter is all the way hubbed into that alligator clip. And with our testo syringe, which has three cc's of local and a little bit of air, I'm going to initially inject some air through that syringe to highlight the whereabouts of that catheter tip. A little bit of air, one, two, three, air. Okay, you can see the air is kind of tracked over the, tibia, over the perineal and under the tibial. And we'll scan left and right of that injection of air just to kind of find out where it's most highlighted, most reflective. That looks like a pretty good spot. You can see the air at the six o'clock, five or six o'clock position underneath the tibial nerve, a little bit more distal down the leg. Right there. And we'll inject some local anesthesia after aspirating negatively for blood. On three, one, two, three, inject. You can see the tibial nerve moving considerably as a result of that injection. We're happy with our location. And we'll take a picture there. Okay, we'll disconnect and just do our usual securing technique with Mastisol and Histocrel. First and foremost, make sure you get all that ultrasound gel wiped off. Use a massasol bullet here. Notice I'm getting a nice wide prep with massasol. I approximate all the boundaries of the tachyderm. I always, after the massasol, dab a couple of times with the sterile 4x4 just to accelerate the drying process. It makes it stickier quicker. And then what I'll do is do a little Hickman pigtail here. Catheter is about 14 or 15 at the skin right now. Now we're going to use our our sterile wand, our filter straw, as a spreading device for the histocrel drops. Okay. Another one.
Todd oh. is with a sterile glove, allowing a hysterical drop to free fall onto the insertion site. And since it doesn't start off as viscous of a solution as it ends, in case some of the drop starts to fall away from the intended target, the hole in the skin, I can use the wand to, uh, to spread it around. For this one, I'll do about four drops. And this is one of the places, this one in the femoral catheter seemed to leak the most in my practice. So I make sure that this hole is nicely sealed with about four drops. We're good there. I'll do a little star pattern of steri strip placement. And throw our tagaderm on. And we are all done. That concludes today's block of the day, a left-sided popliteal sciatic block for a revision arthrodesis of the left ankle.